I have a friend that, that one time described angels as the litter of the universe. What he was saying when he called them that, he was essentially saying that the entire universe is made of angels, that that is the substance that it is constructed of. Uh, and this, this energy, this substance that we're calling angels, uh, it's been acknowledged and used in just about every culture in the world. You know, the Chinese call it chi, the Japanese call it ki, the Hebrews call it ruach. But this energy, it, ha it behaves as if there's an intelligence embedded in this energy. For example, that's why whenever you give it a task to perform, to perform, whenever you give it uh, something to manifest, you don't have to instruct it step by step in how to go about fulfilling this. You just give it a general idea of what to do, and it functions on its own to carry this purpose out. One of the, the side effects of working with this energy is that it behaves in the way that we expect it to behave. So, you know, in, in Western cultures, uh, since we were children, we've been programmed to think of angels as very benevolent, loving, guiding intelligences. So since we naturally have those beliefs or thoughts ingrained with us, then that's the way the energy behaves uh, whenever we invoke it. It behaves as we expect it to behave. In ancient Samaria, they made a very intense and detailed study of some of the characteristics and qualities of this energy, how it behaves, some of the functions it fulfills, things of that nature. And one thing that they described in ancient Samaria is that whenever you come in contact with a person who had accumulated a bunch of this energy around them through ritual work, is that the hair on the back of your neck may stand up, your skin may break out in, in goosebumps, because you are perceiving perhaps for the very first time in your life, levels of reality that extend beyond the five senses. So every single time an angel appears to someone in the Bible without exception, the first thing it says to them is be not afraid. It's because whenever we come into contact with this energy, our first experience will be one of awe. You know, like I said, from that point on, it's no longer hope, it's no longer faith, it's no longer belief. You are seeing from a first-hand experience that something divine truly, really does exist in a very concrete way. You know, that doesn't mean, we, we tend to think it means now that um, we grovel to divinity, to deity, and talk about how unworthy we are and beg it to fulfill our, our requests, these sort of things, or that God is going to stand in judgment of you and send you to hell. That is not what fear of God is referring to. What they are talking to is this sense of awe that you experience when you do come in contact with divine energy, and it's a very unmistakable um, sensation.